All right, well, welcome to you again to release stress and anxiety in the body. Um, all you're gonna need today is a bolster, maybe a little bit of wall space um, if you wanna take some of our postures to the wall. But we're just gonna jump right in. So go ahead and grab your bolster and lay it across ways towards the front of your mat. And we're gonna come into Sphinx pose, but we're gonna have the bolster kind of right underneath the chest and the upper rib cage. So allowing the hips to stay on the floor and then the arms will be on the floor on the other side. So. As you start to come into this, let your hips cascade down towards the floor. Let your forearms come on towards the floor. Let me adjust my microphone here for a second. And allow the bolster or the cushion or pillow or whatever you're using for your prop today to rest right there underneath the chest and the upper rib cage. If extension through the cervical spine by gazing forward doesn't feel good on the neck, feel free to bring your gaze down but try to keep the chest somewhat lifted so we can really feel this release throughout the front body where the hips are touching the floor and we've got that support through the belly. Also this supported extension through the spine, specifically the lumbar and thoracic. Once you have the bolster in place, we'll be here for a couple of minutes. So as much as you can soften the body, let go of tension through the hips and the legs. Try not to hold yourself up in the arms. Let the bolster hold you in this shape. And if you did, like me, bring your gaze down to the floor to release the cervical spine, just try not to collapse downward and keep your chest somewhat open, just not extending through the upper spine. And once you land in your shape and into your stillness, bring that awareness back into the breath perhaps taking a few deep cleansing breaths to transition from your day into your practice by inhaling through the nose and audibly exhaling through the mouth. Or maybe coming into a counting rhythmic breath, maybe four counts in, four counts out. Or maybe today you're just simply noticing the natural leading of your breath without trying to change it in any way. Notice what feels best for you and your practice and this day. And any time you notice the mind starting to wander or become preoccupied. Lovingly nudge that mental focus back to the breath. Right now in this moment, there's nothing to be done, nowhere to be. So allow yourself to really linger in the presence of the moment. Noticing the sensation of the breath. Take a couple more deep breaths here. And 
And then we're slowly gonna come out of this shape. So it might be helpful to walk your hands to the outside of your bolster or cushion and use your arms to release the body off of the prop as you the hips back. Especially with that supported spinal extension, it might be a lot to pull from the spine. So use your arms to come out. And then we're gonna stay in this shape, but go ahead and turn your bolster so it's running the length of your abdomen and head, and we're gonna come into a supported child's pose. So for this one, I'm gonna invite you to take the legs really wide and keep the big toes together so we can find a little bit of release through the hips. And then pull the bolster in. So as you start to lay down and come onto one cheek, you've got the whole upper body supported on the bolster. Once you're down, walk the arms out from underneath of you so the bolster is holding you in the shape rather than pushing into your arms. And go ahead and come on to one side of the head and I'll let you know when we're about halfway through so we can switch. So let the hips be heavy, anchoring back towards the heels and then let the upper body be supported on your bolster. And once you're settled, come back to that breath. Perhaps now even deepening the breath for maybe if you're counting the breath, four or six counts on your inhale, and maybe six or eight counts on the exhale. As you linger here, notice the gentle compression through the front of the hip, as well as the lengthening and opening to the back of the hip and the low back. Notice if there's tension anywhere in the body that you can soften. Maybe even you didn't notice the tension before, but as you really bring your awareness to how the body feels, maybe in the jaw or in the shoulders. And then keep everything as it is, but just turn the head the opposite direction.
And take a couple more breaths here. And just like we came out of our Sphinx pose, use your arms to release the rest of the body. And as you come out, maybe take a moment to have a seat and extend the legs after they've been compressed at the knee joint for a couple of minutes. Might feel nice. Um, I'm going to come to the wall for a dangle, but if that posture doesn't feel inviting to you, by any means, feel free to stay on the floor and take a forward fold that you really enjoy. But if you'd like to come to the wall with me, go ahead and bring your bolster towards the wall and we're gonna come into dangle, which is essentially a forward fold, but we'll be standing using the bolster to support us at our hinging. So feet can be wide or they can be closer together, maybe about hips distance. Um, I'm actually gonna have my feet maybe six or eight inches away from the wall, but the hips are resting on the wall. And then from there, just start to fold over the bolster. And you may have to adjust the bolster so it catches the belly or the chest, angle it, you can rotate it so it's lower if you fold a little deeper. You can stack the elbows and rest the head. You can even take the bolster out more in front of you if you'd like to stay a little bit more with the chest parallel to the floor, especially if you've got spinal disc issues and folding doesn't feel good for you. Maybe staying a little bit more upright actually feels more supportive. So play around with the depth of your fold and how you would like to use your bolster to support you. And then once you're settled, come back to your breath. And I'm just really using the wall to support me here like you would if you were just sitting on the floor. So the wall is like the foundation for the hips. And then just as if you were still in caterpillar or just a seated forward fold, the bolster holding the upper body. And since it's the same thing, you're just standing. And if you really want to dangle, you can let the arms drop, the head drop. Just notice what feels really inviting to you in this moment and in your body. Again, just checking in if you notice the mind wandering lovingly and non judgmentally, bring it back to focusing on your breath. Take a couple more breaths here. Mm. 
And then just like we did on the floor, we're gonna use our arms to come out of this. So bring your hands on top of the bolster and push into it. So you're restacking the vertebra as you gently roll up to stand. And take a moment just to come out of the forward fold, whether you were seated or whether you brought it to the wall. And we're gonna come into supported malasana. And again, you can do this at the wall or you can take your bolster towards the middle of the floor, but go ahead and orient your bolster so it's against the wall, maybe on its mid setting. So as you come to sit down, um, your hips are gonna be somewhat elevated and supported. So rather than just sitting in malasana or in a squat, you're actually gonna be sitting on the bolster. And if your bolster is really thin, you might wanna maybe stack it on some yoga blocks or something to lift it. So as you come to sit, your hips can rest comfortably a little bit deeper than the knees, but you don't feel like you're holding the shape. You're actually just sitting on a cushion. Go ahead and take your legs as wide as feels comfortable for the hips. And bring the elbows inside the knees and then the hands together. So your arms are assisting you here to release through the hips. Just make sure you're not exerting any effort through the legs. This is not an active squat, very passive. Let your arms and the bolster and the walls hold you in the shape. creating a similar sensation as was in child's pose. So hopefully feeling a little bit of compression through the front of the hips, and then that opening through the inner thighs, that release through the low back and the back of the hips. And once you feel settled and you can stay in the stillness of the shape, Bring your awareness back to the breath. Again, just scanning the body with every exhale, noticing if there's any tension we're still holding on to. Typical areas are the jaw or the shoulders. Maybe we're even not noticing, but we're clenching the teeth a little bit that we can let that go. And take three more deep breaths here. And then go ahead and if you're at the wall, just release the arms and sit up so your upper body is connected to the wall and just take a moment. And then slowly release. We're going to come back towards the center of the mat. So however you would like to get there and go ahead and bring your bolster with you. And we're going to come into a restorative twist. So bring your bolster how it was set up for child's pose. And we'll start on the left hip. Now the legs can be however is comfortable. You can just rest your right calf kind of in the arch, inner arch of the left foot if that feels comfortable. But if you like to, we can also take this resemblance of deer pose where you have this 90 degree bend in your front knee and then this 90 degree bend in the back knee with the knees somewhat in line with the hips. So a little bit more hip flexor and hip release. But if that does not feel comfortable in the legs, feel free to bring them in closer together. Once you have the legs the way that feels comfortable for you, 
go ahead and start to rotate the upper body with one hand on each side of the bolster. Now, I like to have a little bit of space between my leg and the bolster where the bolster is just finding my rib, but if you like to pull it all the way in, that's there for you too. So as you start to lower down either just the upper body from the rib to the head, or maybe it's everything of the upper body, including the um, waist as well. And then once your upper body is supported, walk the arms out from underneath of you so there's no weight in the arms, but the bolster is supporting the upper body. And if the legs got uncomfortable, feel free to make any adjustments so that you can just find this gentle restorative twist through the thoracic spine. And then settling into that stillness and coming right back to focusing on the breath. Anytime you notice those intrusive thoughts, analyzing the past or storytelling your future, feel free to take a moment to acknowledge what's arising. And then when you can, bring that awareness back to the breath. Big part of letting go of stress is allowing ourselves to really be in the present moment. to fully experience what's happening. And to appreciate that you deserve this moment of non-doing, this moment of complete stillness. Allow yourself just to be still and let everything go. There's nothing to do here. Nowhere to be. Take a couple more deep breaths here. And then just like we've been doing, we'll use the arms to assist the rest of the body out. So walk the arms closer towards the chest and then press yourself up out of your twist. Feel free just to roll towards the other side. I'm gonna flip my prop though so I don't have my back to you for that duration. Again, take the leg variation that feels best for you and your body, as well as the distance between your leg and your bolster. But once you're set up on the other side, have the hands frame the bolster first and then kind of unravel your way down. And once you're all the way down, walk the arms out from underneath of you so you can allow the bolster to hold you in the shape. And that's one of the beautiful things about yin is it's a very passive practice. You find the shape being held with different props. 
And then gravity does the work of the stretching. And the benefits are phenomenal for the body and the mind. When we allow ourselves to truly just embrace the experience of stillness. And the power of noticing the breath. Take a couple more breaths here. And then again, walk the arms next to the body first and use the arms to push yourself up. And leave your bolster where it is and we'll turn away from it and we're going to use it to support us in a little bit of spinal extension. So you can have the legs crossed or straight, but I think it can be really nice to keep them bent to release the low back. Whenever you're ready, use the arms to kind of unravel. So again, placing right the bottom of that rib right on the bolster. So my low back is actually kind of free. I can put my hands under the low back, but it's supporting everything from the rib cage up towards the head. And maybe just start with the knees bent, see how that feels. And if you wanna get really lazy with it, which can be nice, walk the feet out a little bit, let the knees fall together so they're actually supporting and holding each other up. Let your arms just rest out naturally from the shoulders. But if you like to extend the legs, feel free to do that or find a crisscross or whatever feels really inviting for your body. But notice this extension throughout the spine, the opening through the chest and the front body.
And once you feel supported with your props, again, come back into that stillness and bring the awareness back to the breath. Softening throughout the face, the jaw, softening through the neck and shoulders, and observing the breath. Take a couple more breaths here. And then slowly walk your hands in next towards your hips. And again, use the arms to release the rest of the body. Slowly remove your bolster and keep it within arm's length. We're gonna place it underneath the hips. So go ahead and come to lay all the way down flat onto the floor and press through the bottom of your feet to lift your hips to slide the bolster underneath your hips, your tailbone region, and maybe even a little bit of the low back and the sacrum. Once you feel like everything of the hips is supported, go ahead and extend your legs out long onto the floor. So now we're coming into this extension through the pelvis and the hips. So hopefully feeling this nice release through the area we noticed the compression earlier in class, the hip flexors, the iliopsoas, and allowing that to release as well as we're supported in this spinal extension. Arms can be wherever, they can rest on the body or on the floor. And if you need extra support in the low back, feel free to bring the bolster up a little bit more. If it feels like it's tugging or pulling too much on the low back. But once you feel supported and that you can come into that stillness, bring the awareness back into your breath.
And then keeping everything as it is. Start to slowly bring your right knee into your chest, maybe even using your arm to support that. And then once it feels in place and you feel that little bit of release to the low back, bring the left knee in to meet the right knee. Now you've got a little bit of decompression through the lumbar. And maybe you stay exactly as you are with the legs bent and that feels really helpful. Or maybe it feels really nice to straighten your legs up towards the ceiling. Whatever counter variation feels the most inviting for you today. And we'll just be here for a couple of breaths. And we're going to come into our final relaxation shape. So perhaps you kind of just scooch the bolster down as you come out. So it lands underneath the knee. So again, giving that low back some nice support. Or maybe you do something else with the bolster. Maybe you put it underneath the back or underneath the calves or anything that feels really inviting. Whatever you would like your final relaxation pose to be for your practice. And we're going to do a little guided pranayama. So we're going to inhale for six. We're going to hold the breath for seven. And exhale for an eight count. So take a nice deep breath just to kind of clear the slate. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, side out. And at the bottom of the exhale, inhale, two, Three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, continue counting for yourself. Six in, seven to hold, eight to exhale. And take three more rounds.
Take your last exhale. And once you've reached your count of eight, take a nice deep inhale and an audible exhale. And allow your breath to turn to its natural rhythm. Start to add in small movement, perhaps through the fingers and toes, as you gently reawaken the body. And then however you would like to get there, just coming to lay on one side of your body, whichever side feels the most inviting. And pause and linger here for a moment, taking a couple of breaths, perhaps even drawing the knees in closer to the chest and rounding through the spine. And then when you're ready, gently press yourself up into a comfortable seat. And take just a moment to reflect how the body and mind feel now versus when you first arrived on your mat. Hopefully noticing a shift more towards peace and calm and introspection. And when you're ready, bring your hands to your heart. Thank you so much for sharing your practice time with me. And from my heart to yours, be well.